a stock can be purchased with either cash or equipment, or you can sell a stock and receive an asset in return. But how do you journalize a stock transaction? Furthermore, a stock can be sold at no par value or at par value. The term issue means sold. And paid in capital is an excess you have after you sold the stock. So that means the stock was sold above the par value of the stock. Good. So now let's see if we can do this exercise. In this exercise on August 7, Asian Artifact Corporation issued. So the issue here means sold. Okay. So we have the issue here means sold. For cash, 300,000 shares, 300,000 shares of no par common stock at $1.75. Okay. So I'm going to journalize that on August 7th. So on August 7th, it was sold $3,000, okay? So that is uh, $300,000 at 1.75. So the word at is how much they sold it, okay? So I'm going to multiply 300,000 by 1.75. Okay, and remember this is cash, it's money inflow, it's money coming in, so that becomes a debit. That is why I put it on the debit side. Now, what is the worth of the common stock? So the common stock is like equity. And we know equity is on the other side of the accounting equation, and it's a credit account, okay? Just like capital. Equity could be equal to capital, okay? But in this case, this is a corporation, it's not a sole proprietorship. So that's why we use common stock there. So you sort it, and then what is the worth of the common stock? It has no par value. So that is, it's going to be the same as how much you sold it. If it's at no par value, it's going to be as same, it's going to be credited as same as the cash value. Now, then we have September 1st, Asian Artifact issued another sold again 25,000 shares, okay, of 2%. So when we mention this, 2% usually referring to the dividends, how much dividends they will get, okay? So when you're doing the transaction, you might wanna ignore this for now, okay? But the per 40 preferred stock at par for cash, okay? Now, what does this mean? Okay, so this means they sold it at $40, okay? It was sold at $40, that's the at here for cash. Okay, so this one I told you is dividend, so you ignore it when you're doing the transaction for now. You're only going to um, include it when you're finding out how my dividend you have to give the stockholders. And I'm going to do that in my next video, how to do dividends, okay? So with the cash value, how much cash is the company receiving? The company is receiving 25,000 shares multiplied by $40. So that is how much the company is receiving. And this is at no par value. It's at the cash value, at the cash. So we are going to do this preferred stock at the same as the cash we receive, okay? So left always have to, has to equal, right? Okay, so let's do the last one, which says, on November 1st, Asian Artifact issued again that is sold for cash, 10,000 shares, and then $2. Remember, you ignore this because it's only you only need it for calculating dividends. Okay, that tells you how much dividends you would give them. Okay, $40 par. So this has a par value of $40, but it was sold at $52. Okay, so remember the keyword is at. That tells you how much it was sold at, okay? So on November 1st, my cash that is coming in is $10,000, 10,000 no, 10, shares issue. Okay, so I sold 10,000 shares at, that's a multiply by $52, okay? So that is how much cash I'm receiving. But what is the worth of the preferred stock I have sold. 
the wealth is the power value. Power value is the wealth of the stock you have sold. Okay. So what is the wealth of the stock? And it tells us here the power value for the preferred stock is 40. So I'm going to do I'm going to take my $25,000, eh, $10,000, eh, 10,000 shares. So I sold 10,000 shares multiplied by $40. Now, I mentioned to you previously about paid in capital. When you sold the stock above the power value. In this case, the power value is 40. And then we sold it for 52. So we have gained $12. Okay, so this is at premium. So we sold it at premium. So how do we do a uh, paid in capital? There are two ways you, you can do it, okay? You can do it by taking the debit minus the credit, okay? That gives you 120,000. Or you can confirm by taking the 10,000 shares, 10,000 shares multiplied by the $12 we computed here. And that gives you the same $120,000. So our paid in capital for this stock transaction is $120,000 on November 2nd. Okay, let's do another one with a stated value. Okay. So it says on July 2nd, lasting company covered a issue that means sold for cash $300,000, 300,000 shares of no power value common stock with a stated value at $9. Okay, so the word at tells you how much we sold it for. So that is what I'm concerned, okay? So I'm concerned about that. So I'm going to recall that journal entry and I'm going to take 300,000 shares multiplied by $9, okay? So that is 2,700,000, okay? But with common stock, okay, and as we hear, uh, in A, okay, so A says, generalize the entry for July 2nd and November 8th, assuming that the common stock is to be credited with the stated value. Uh -huh. So we are told it has to be credited with the stated value. So we are going to credit the common stock at the stated value, okay? And the stated value is $4 right here. Okay, $4 is the stated value. So we take $4 multiplied by the number of shares we sold. That's 300,000, okay? So that's 1.2 million. And then we need to find our paid in capital. So we sold this above the par, okay? Above the stated value. So this is above the stated value. And what's the difference of that? So we, it, we sold it for nine and the stated value was four. So we actually gain in $5 per each year. And there are two ways you can do that. You can take the debit minus the credit and that gives you that. Or you can actually take the 300,000 and you multiply by this $5 and that gives you the same as $500,000. Okay, so that is the difference you can do. 300,000 multiplied by nine minus four. Okay, now let's do the one for November 8th. What happened November 8th? Assume that the common stock came. So in November 8th, it issued again. We sold again 40,000 shares of $90 per preferred stock at, okay? Let me get rid of this so I can see. So at $100. So I know I sold each share at $100. So I know how much I'm going to receive in cash. So my cash will be, the number of shares I sold, 40,000, multiplied by, uh, where is it? Multiplied by $100. Okay, so that is my four million cash I'm receiving. Good. Now, what is the weight of my preferred stock? So this is a preferred stock. What is it worth? Okay, it is actually worth $90. Okay, but I sold it for 100. Okay, so I'm going to record my $90 with a worth of it. So 40,000 multiplied by 90, okay? So if you want to know your paid in capital, there's still two ways you can do that. You take the debit minus the credit, or you can find the difference, and the difference is $10 in this case, 100 minus 90, how much you sold, that's $10.
So that's the difference, okay? So we can take the 40,000 shares, multiply by $10, and that's still 400,000 pounds. Okay, let's do a little bit um, a more complicated one, not too complicated, okay? But similar one, okay? <clears throat> In this case, on July 14, Mountain Rex uh, issue, so issue whenever you hear issued is again sold, 24,000 shares of 25, okay? That, so that is the value per at, and we sold it that day. So this is the par value. Okay, it's worth, this is the worth of the stock, but we sold it at 32. Okay, so that is how much cash we are receiving. Okay, so the cash that is coming in will be 24,000 multiplied by the ads. Okay, so 24,000 multiplied by how much we sold it, $32. We sold it for $32, so that's how much cash we are receiving. But what is the worth of the common stock? The common stock is worth only $25. So we are going to take 24,000 multiplied by $25. Okay, so that is the worth of the common stock. Now, how much profit have we made on it? Okay, so that is how you do debit minus credits. And that gives you this. Or you can take your 24,000 multiply by the difference. Okay, so 32 minus. 32 minus 25. Okay, and that still gives you $168,000. Okay. Yeah. Now, on March 17, the company issued that is sold again 60,000 shares of $10. Okay, so that is the par value is $10 at a stock, and then that's how much we sold it at. Okay. So here, that is the par value. That's the worth of the stock and we sold it at 11. So I'm going to do the same, I'm going to have the same procedure. That is, I'm selling 60,000 shares multiplied by how much I'm receiving at $11, okay? So that is how much cash I'm receiving. But what is the worth of the stock I've sold? The stock is worth only $10. So $10 multiplied by the number of shares, 60,000. Okay, that's 600,000. Now my paid in capital, my paid in capital is debit minus my credit, that's, that's it. All you can do, the number of shares you sold, 60,000, multiply by the difference, okay? So it was, we sold it for 11, but it was actually 10, and that is different. So that's 60, we have our 60,000 there, okay? So all these ones, all these transactions, all these stocks, are sold at premium. Premium means you sold it above, above the um, par value, okay? Above the value of the stock. Because the va in the first case, the value of the stock was 25, we sold it at 32, so it was above. And I will do another video uh, discussing about discount. Discount is when you sell it below, <clears throat> below, below the par value. Okay, below the value. All right, now in the second question, now that we are done with the first one, the second one says, what is the total amount invested, total paid in capital by stockholders of, as of 17, on March 17? Okay, remember I showed you that paid in capital is an investment that goes to stockholders equally. Okay, so now we are going to use that information to find out how much, what are our paid in capital? On January 7th, we had paid in capital of this, <coughs> plus another paid in capital on March 17th. So our total paid in capital as of March 17th is $228,000. Okay, that's we add those paid in capital together. Good, watch my next video on how to do dividends, how to allocate or share dividends among uh, stake or shareholders. There are so many ways to do accounting and whichever way you choose to do, keep practicing and good luck on your test.